I want to say a word about symmetry. Symmetry is a very important idea in physics that if one thing works one way, it probably works the other way also. Some really simple examples of symmetry are, for instance, if I push my left hand to the left, then I'm also pushing my right hand to the right. Like, watch this. Right? I'm exerting a force each direction. So Newton's third law is an example of symmetry. Also, you find symmetry pretty much everywhere. For instance, an antenna that makes a good broadcast will also be a good receiver in the same directions. There's this symmetry really underlying a whole bunch of the mathematics that's at the basement of physics. So another example of symmetry, uh, get ready, you already know that there's a magnetic force on charges that move in a magnetic field in the right direction. So I don't think it should come as too much of a surprise that if charges move, they actually create a magnetic field because it's kind of the magnetic field of the moving charges interacting with the other magnetic field that cause this magnetic force. Because you know magnetic force really only applies to magnets. So moving charges must actually become a magnet. And this leads us to Ampere's law. And Ampere, <clears throat> Ampere managed to figure out, well, this is how our book puts it. It's so sissy, look at this. Our book says, if you add up all of the magnetic fields that are parallel to some length, then you will get this number, mu naught times the current that's enclosed. This reminds me of another thing that we've seen. This reminds me of if I take the integral over some area of the electric field dotted into the area, then I will get, uh, what did we get? We got the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught, a constant of the universe. This is the uh, permeability of free space. No, sorry, this is the permittivity of free space. This is the permeability of free space. I guess I should label those since I have even gotten myself confused on that. Permittivity of free space. That's the naught part. The free space is the naught, but the epsilon just represents permittivity, and it's a, an electrical concept. And this guy right here is called permeability of free space. And what's going to surprise you is that <laughs> mu naught is a perfect number. It is 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7th. And it's got some units. I guess it's got to have units that make it into magnetic field times area. We're going to have current, so we've got to get rid of the current units. So I'm going to have, uh, oh, uh, no, not times area, times, times length right there. Tesla meters, magnetic field times meters. And then we're going to divide by the units of the current. So it's Tesla meters per amp. And that gives us uh, mu naught. Now, mu naught doesn't have any error. It is exactly 4 pi. And that is known forever. And the beautiful thing about that is it's not a measured quantity. This mu naught holds great secrets. It's because it's related to other fundamental constants of the universe and it's calculated from them that we can say that it is absolutely and precisely known. Wonderful stuff. Okay, so I want you to see though that this, which we call Gauss's law, is very similar to this, which is Ampere's law. And really, I guess I should show you the integral formulation of Ampere's law so you can truly see the symmetry here. I want to see that it's, well, it's got to be magnetic field dotted into some length. Now we're not talking about going over the whole area. We're just making a single loop. So I don't have to put anything down here. Here we're going over some closed area. I just need to go over any closed loop. And this is some closed area. So I would have to enclose a volume with this. In this loop, I'm just going to be enclosing an area. So some closed area, which encloses a volume. And this is some closed loop that encloses an area. All right, cool. And this is going to be, well, you see it right now. It's just mu naught times the enclosed current. So my point is, 
if you go around in a loop, like let's make a really simple example. Here's a wire that goes forever and it has a current coming into the page and we slice the wire, the wire would be like this, but we've sliced it and we see that there's a magnetic field. The direction of the magnetic field, well that's easy, that's a right hand rule. You put your thumb in the direction of the current, boop, and the magnetic field curls around it. <clears throat> you can see this really beautifully with a high powered power supply and uh, you see that iron filings will line up around a current carrying wire in a circle that's what my magnetic field does. It circles around. And there's magnetic field out here too. And I guess it's a little bit weaker probably because it's farther from the source of the magnetic field. And uh, this current, oh then I guess I should label that. The current is what's going into the page in the wire. And it's got a magnetic field going around it. So my point is we can use Ampere's law by making a loop around a wire and the current will be enclosed within my loop. Then I take the current and I multiply it by this constant of nature, a derived constant of nature in fact, and then I find that that's my magnetic field times how far I've gone around in my loop. And again, just like we did in Gauss's law, we're going to seek situations of high symmetry so that we can very easily find the magnetic field around something. So let's do this, let's do Gauss's law, no, just kidding, let's do Ampere's law for Let's label this again so you don't get them confused. Ampere's law for a current carrying wire, just one wire, and this will help me to know how big the magnetic field is around that wire at all locations. So there's I, and I'm gonna make an Amperian loop here uh, in blue. My Amperian loop is in blue, and I'm planning to go around like this. Remember, Amperian loops are not real, Amperian loops are just, what are we doing? Well, I'm gonna go this direction. Amperian loops are just a construct in our mind, very much like Gaussian surfaces are a construct in our minds. So as I go around this, I'm gonna be going around it at a radius of R, and I'm gonna go around this direction because I know that that's the direction of the magnetic field as well. All right, there's my Amperian loop, and my plan is to write down that the magnetic field dotted into the length, the differential length as I go around here. I get little DLs. DL points that way. Oh, guess what? Right here, the magnetic field also points that way. That's my magnetic field. That's my uh, <coughs> little differential length. Over here, the magnetic field points up and my differential length as I'm going around in the circle also points up. DL points up and magnetic field points up. So in fact, I always have in this dot product, I always have them parallel to each other. So let's just write it down and then we can simplify it in a minute. It's supposed to be mu naught times I enclosed. My point is we don't have a dot product anymore. As I go around the loop, I just need magnetic field DL and that's mu naught times I enclosed. On the left side though, notice that the magnetic field, as long as I stay the same distance away from the wire, I'm gonna be going around an Amperian loop with a radius of R, that's always the same distance. Magnetic field is a constant. <gasps> this is beautiful! Now, all I need to do is take the magnetic field times the integral of L as I go around in a circle. I'm integrating the length of the path around the circle that's simply the circumference. And it's gonna be mu naught times I enclosed. Guess what the circumference of a circle is? Just guess, try it. It is two times pi times R. My plan is now to take this little bit of work that we've done and solve it for the magnetic field as a function of how far you are away from a current carrying wire. It is mu naught times I enclosed divided by two pi r, which means that the field gets weaker as you get further away, but not very quickly. This isn't an r square law. This is just one over r. So the field gets weaker, weaker, weaker as we go farther away, but not very rapidly. So please enjoy, and we'll look at some consequences of that and some cool things that you can build next video.